Hey, this is Dr. Willie Jolly, and I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but our eternities are wrapped up in it, and I'm grateful for this minute, this moment, this opportunity to speak to you and share with you some ideas to help you through these challenging times and help you turn your setbacks into comebacks. How many are ready for a comeback. We need some uh, mindset, a resilience mindset, a comeback mindset. Well, that's what I'm here to do, to give you some of those. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is how to turn those setbacks into comebacks. In a time where we've seen great change and challenge, crisis, in fact, we've got a pandemic. We've got a economic downturn, massive job loss, racial strife, social upheaval. We've got a environmental challenge like we haven't seen in years, if ever. We've got on one coast, hurricane after hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. So many that they had to run out of names or at least letters in the alphabet. They had to go to the Greek alphabet. And then on the other coast, we've got fires, fires everywhere fires. And then we're in the midst of a very disruptive political season. Any one of those by themselves could disrupt our economy, could, could rough, uh, disrupt our lives, could disrupt our comfort level and our normalcy. But they're all coming at the same time. So what do we do? Well, I want to tell you that a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. And in order to get some resiliency and some new possibilities, I'm gonna give you some principles. Now, I am grateful that I've been called the number one authority in the world today for turning setbacks into comebacks. I wrote a book many years ago now called A Setback as a Setup for a Comeback. And that book has gone on to help people all over the globe. It's a global bestseller to help people to turn their setbacks into comebacks because it has research-based principles that will help you turn those setbacks into comebacks. And I use the word principles rather than just ideas, but principles, because principles are bedrock. See, if I take a rock and throw it up in the air, it's going to come back down. If I do it 10 times, it's going to come down 10 times. 100 times, 100 times are going to come down. A thousand times, a million times, every time I do it, it's going to always come down. Why? Because of a principle called gravity. It always impacts that rock the same way. And so there's some principles here in this book that will help you turn setbacks into comeback. If you're an individual, you've been through what we call a devastating D of life. A devastating D is a downsizing, a, a divorce, a diagnosis, a disease or maybe even the death of a loved one, or natural disasters, devastating deeds. But these setbacks, they are principles to turn them into comebacks. So I want to give you some of the principles in this message today for you and for your team to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks. And I know it's been tough. I know it's been a tough time. I know it's been a crisis moment. We've had situations where people have lost their jobs. We've seen budgets cut. We've seen situations where there's uh, remorse for those who remain. We've seen situations where many parents are not only working from home, but they're working, they're becoming teachers at home, administrators at home. They're, they're overwhelmed with all that they're being called to do. And then there's this sense of uncertainty that we all have been faced with. Uncertainty. When is this over? When do we get back to some sense of normalcy? And we don't know. So what do you do then? Well, let me tell you what you do. You, you listen to these principles that I'm about to share with, with you, these principles I'm going to share with you, and then you use them. Share these principles with your friends and family members. They work. And if you use them, they will impact your future, your finances, and help you to get forward and move forward with a new expectancy and an excitement. Now, as we talk about crisis, the word crisis is an interesting word. I love what 
President John F. Kennedy said, if you look at crisis from an Asian definition, it's very unique because the way it's written, it has dual meaning. It is at one time, great danger, but at the exact same moment, great opportunity. And that's what I want to impress upon you as we go through these setbacks after setback after setback after setback. It is a time of great danger, great calamity, catastrophe, but it's also a great opportunity. And that's where I want to get you. How do you get to the opportunity? Well, uh, as I said, I wrote the book, it not only impacted individual lives all over the globe, but corporate and organizational setbacks and the comeback stories that I've gotten over the years. But the number one story most people know me for is a story about my work with a little company called Ford Motor Company. In 2005, Ford Motor Company was in a crisis. It had a setback. Their market share had gone from 50% market share down to 15%. They were on their way out of business, on the brink of bankruptcy. They brought in a new CEO named Alan Mulally, who had turned around Boeing aircraft. Alan Mulally came to Ford and said, we got a crisis. We got to change the culture of this company or Ford is going to be history. He said, we got to turn this setback into a comeback. And when he said that, a setback, we got to turn this setback into a comeback. One of the execs in the boardroom said, hey, 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 hey. I heard a guy speak at a conference I was at in Florida. I bought his book. It's called A Setback and Set Up for a Comeback. It was outstanding. His message was on the point and that book was outstanding. He said, look, we got to get him on board. We got to get him to work with us. They called me and I went to work with Ford in 2006. They brought me back in 2007 and they brought me back in 2008. And in 2009, Ford was the only one of the big three automakers to be able to reject a government bailout. And they went from losing millions per month to making billions. Now, let me ask you a question. Did the economy go up between 2006 and 2009? No. Did circumstances in America go up between 2006 and 2009? No. What changed thinking? When you change your thinking, you will change your future. And that's what I want to help you with today. I'm going to give you some principles that will help you change your thinking change your future. Now, let me tell you where this book emanated from, though, before I tell you the principles, that this book came from my life experiences as well as research that I did in writing the book. But I'll tell you my life experience specifically, how I came to be here what, doing what I'm doing now. See, I was a nightclub singer. These are some of the awards I, I, I won when I was in the nightclub business. I was a nightclub singer. I became the most popular nightclub singer in the Washington, D.C., out of between Washington and Atlantic, Atlantic City. And then when I got married, I, just, I decided to just work in D.C. so I could stay home and, and, and started and became the opening act for a brand new, well-regarded, exciting nightclub. And we built that nightclub over the next few years into the number one night spot in Washington, D.C. People would line up at 7 o'clock for the 8 o'clock show, 9 o'clock for the 10 o'clock show. Things were going great. I won the award, best jazz singer, best entertainer, best performer. Things were going great. I was making money. I bought a, a house. I had a new sports car. Things were going great. Well, one night I went in the nightclub. Club owner said, I want to talk to you after the night show. I told the guys in the band, they want to talk. We, we, we've been selling out for six months. We got standing room only audiences. We're about to get our raise. I walked in his office that day. He said, that night, he said, you were great. I said, thank you. He said, you, 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 you were fantastic. We love you. The people love you. I said, yeah, we made a lot of money since you've been here. I said, yes. He said, that's why it's hard for me to tell you what I got to tell you. Now that we've made a lot of money, the owners of the club have decided they got to get a better return on investment. And the only way to do that with a full nightclub is to lower the cost. And the band's the biggest cost. We're going to try something that's a lot cheaper. We bought a karaoke machine. It's filling up nightclubs. This was during the karaoke craze time. He said, we found something cheaper. I said, but what about my bills? I learned that night nobody cares about your bills but you and the people you owe. I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. I was depressed. But a friend blessed me with two things a motivational cassette tape and a book. I had never heard a motivational message, a motivational speech, but he gave me the cassette tape. 
Y'all remember cassette tapes? And on this tape was a guy who said, in five years, you're going to be the same person you are today, except for two things. The people you meet who inspire you and the books you read that empower you. Wow. People you meet inspire and the books you read empower you. And then that same friend gave me a book called Think and Grow Rich. And that was the first book I'd ever read from cover to cover. And it changed my thinking. I took a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to little kids about staying away from drugs. It was during that year I discovered an ability I didn't know I had to use words to communicate. From the little kids, the teachers would say, can you come to my teacher's group? And someone there would say, can you come to my church? And then someone there would say, can you come to my company? And things started growing. And then one day, Les Brown, a great motivational speaker, heard me speak and sing to a small group as he was walking down a hall when the doorway was open. He heard this speaker. He looked in and listened to my message. He said, at the end of my speech, you got quite a talent how you mix speaking and music. He said, look, I'm putting together a tour. We've been looking for an opening act who could speak and sing. I think you'd be the great opening act. Are you interested? I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so a few months later, we kicked off the Les Brown Music and Motivation Dream Team Tour, which featured Les Brown, Billy Preston, the great organist, Gladys Knight, the iconic singer, and a little guy from Washington, D.C., me. Because of Les and Gladys, they introduced me to some radio people. I got a little radio show and it got popular, then got syndicated. You can now hear me on Sirius XM radio every week with the Willie Jolly Wealthy Way show, which is now the number one self-help show in America on national radio. And you can hear it every Saturday at four o'clock Eastern time on channel 141. It re-airs Tuesday at six and Thursday at six, channel 141. But you can also hear me every morning across America on the Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell radio show at 820 Eastern Time, 720 Central Time with Wake Up and Win with Dr. Willie Jolly. Now, how about if you're not in the areas where that show airs or you can't find it at that time or you're not available? Well, if you just go to winwithwilly.com, winwithwilly.com, you can actually go there, sign up for my newsletter. And if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get a daily, I'll send you a one minute motivational video every morning. Absolutely my gift to you. We wanna help more people get through these tough times because see, your input determines your output. Garbage in, garbage out, good stuff in, good stuff out. So I, I started getting the positive information. I started having a radio show, things started happening. And one day a book publisher called and said, I've been listening to you on the radio. I love your ideas. Have you ever thought about writing a book? I said, no, I never thought about it. He said, let me make you an offer. <laughs> I said, I just thought about it. So my first book came out and it, called, it was called, uh, it is called, uh, It Only Takes a Minute to Change Your Life, followed by A Setback is a Setup for a Comeback, followed by Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks, followed by An Attitude of Excellence, followed by a book that just came out uh, about a year ago with me and my wife, Make love, make money, make it last. We've been married for going on 36 years. Haven't had an argument in 33 years. And people always ask, how do you do it? What happened? Well, I told them that the first couple of years were like World War III, but we learned some wise principles from some wise teachers who gave us a strategy. See, there are two ways to get to any goal, mentors and mistakes. Write this one down. Mentors and mistakes, both will get you there. But one gets you there with less headaches, heartaches, and not subside your head. Get mentors. Well, we got some mentors in marriage who helped us to learn how to go from arguing to loving. We haven't had an argument in over 33 years. So we put that in a book. The book is called Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last. You can go to jollymarriage.com, get a free chapter, and you'll be able to take it. And then when you get the book, get two copies, one for you and one for your spouse, so y'all can grow together. Well, the book started coming out. Things started happening. We started growing. And I started going around the country and around the world speaking. And then in 1999, I was speaking in Dallas, Texas. My phone was going crazy. Urgent. What's so urgent? I call my office. What's so urgent? Toastmasters International keep saying it's urgent. I call Toastmasters. Hi, this is Willie Jolly. Willie Jolly, we just want to let you know. You've just been named one of the outstanding five speakers in the world for this year. Former winners include Colin Powell, Norman Schwarzkopf, Nelson Mandela, Margaret Thatcher, Christopher Reeve. I said, what? What? Why? What? Roo -roo. I said, what? <laughs> I said, who? They said, I said, you sure you got the right person? My name is Willie Jolly. Willie, 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 Willie. The one from Washington, D.C. Yeah, one who wrote the book, set back, set up for a combo. Yeah, you're the one. But those are big dogs. I'm a little dog. I speak to school kids. I speak to churches. I even speak at people's family reunions. And the lady said something I'll never forget. She said, let me tell you, a little dog keep yapping loud enough. 
strong enough. Big dogs start to hear about you. Moral of the story, just think if I never had a setback. A setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. And it's comeback time. So I'm gonna give you three principles. Out of, out of this program, when we do the full program, I got seven principles. Due to the time we got in this presentation, I've only got time to give you a few of them. So at some point, I'd love to come back and give you the whole package. It's about an hour and a half program that I can give you a whole package. But right now in this short program, I wanna give you three principles. Number one, do not panic. Mm -mm. Don't panic. Panic is taken from the Greek word to choke. When you panic, you choke off the air to your brain. You choke off the air to your brain, you cannot think clearly. You cannot think clearly, you cannot make wise decisions. You cannot make wise decisions when there's a moment where you need to think your way through it. And in crisis moments, that's what gets you through, thinking your way through. When there's a crisis and you cannot think your way through because of panic, you end up making a poor decision. Nothing good comes from panic. Nothing good comes from panic. So do not panic. Think clearly. Calm down. Number two, don't willingly participate nor commiserate. Don't willingly participate. That means don't buy into the gloom and doom. Don't participate. Don't buy into it. Number one thing, you must not participate in these challenging times. You must not participate in getting sick. If you can do everything, if you can, stay away from getting sick. Do what they tell you. Wear the mask. Do social distancing. It's critical that you do not participate in getting sick because you don't have the same energy and ability to do all you can do. So don't participate. But then don't commiserate. Don't buy into the gloom and doom. Don't buy into all the bad news. Look. You take a sponge. A sponge is designed to soak up water. But if you take that sponge and put it in a bucket of water, at some point, it's going to be overwhelmed. It cannot do what it was able and designed to do because it's overwhelmed. The same is true for you. You were designed to perform and to do great things at a high level. But if you're overwhelmed by the bad news, the sad news, the depressing news, the, 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 the despondent news, it creates a pall. It creates a, a down, a cloud over your thinking. That is why you got to limit your bad news time. You must not sit in front of the television all day long looking at bad news. I say a little bit in the morning maybe and a little bit in the evening and that's it. Fill yourself up with the pure, the powerful, and the positive. That is why I want you to get those one minute messages. Every day, go get that, that go to winwithwilly.com. In fact, go to winwithwilly.com and you'll get the one minute messages. You'll get my song, We'll Get Through This. That'll inspire you. My friend Les Brown said he listens to it every morning and every night. It inspires him. But you'll also get me sending you messages and you'll get access to all my websites right at that one site, winwithwilly.com, my marriage site, my faith based site, my youth site, my business site my personal site, all of these for you to help you grow because that's what we're here to do. So do not panic. Don't willingly participate nor commiserate. And then don't stop thinking about the power and possibilities of tomorrow. In challenging times, you're going to have moments where you're going to have to do two things. You're going to, one, deal with the problem that you're dealing with right now at this moment. One eye, though, on that problem and one eye always on your future goals and dreams. Why is that important? Well, let's say you're a golfer. Okay, let's say you got a golf. And let's say Tiger Woods, or let's just take Tiger Woods, and he hits a ball off the tee, and it goes over in the woods, or in a sand trap, but let's say it goes in the woods. Now, he got, he got to do something here. He got to get it out of here. Now, he could panic and start swinging, and he'll lose the whole tournament, the whole game. But if he's wise, which he most great golfers like him, they'll do one thing. Keep one eye on this problem. I got to deal with this. Get it out of here onto the playing ground on the fairway again. And then the other eye on winning the tournament. That's what you got to do right now. One eye on this problem, but one eye on the, on the goal. I close with this thought. In these challenging times, you must make a decision. How are you going to think? Are you going to think like an ostrich or like an eagle? Ostrich in tough times and crisis moments sticks his head in the ground and says, wake me when it's over. But the eagle does something odd. It takes off and flies right into the face of the storm. It fights through the storm, through the problem, through the challenges until it gets above the storm. And then it looks down at the panoramic view of the whole environment and says, oh yeah, there's a problem right here. There's a crisis right here. Oh, but up the road, there's good. 
up the road. It's good up the road. And I'm saying to you today, there's a crisis right here, right now, but there's good up the road. Keep fighting, keep striving, keep working, because there's good up the road. You have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon you, you can't refuse it. You didn't seek it, you didn't choose it, but it's up to you to use it. You must suffer if you lose it. Give account if you abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but your eternities are wrapped up in it. This is Dr. Willie Jolly. I want to thank you for having me for these few minutes to share my thoughts with you. And remember, for sure, as I say at the end of my, my show on XM, every show, for sure, your best is yet to come. God bless you. Have a great day and keep the faith because the best truly is yet to come. God bless you. Pull the shades down on the sun Don't want to see the morning break to another day All the words I hear you say Close the door and keep it shut You say the pain is just too much for you to take how do you begin to make your way back to some kind of peace of mind? Let me share with you what's been proven through time. We'll get through this. We'll break new ground. Yeah. When we're lost within our weakness Hope is waiting to be found We'll get through this No matter what it takes I believe we will for heaven's sake We'll get through this Starts tearing at the faith deep inside of you. Don't be afraid. Just remember what God said. That nothing formed against you will succeed. As long as in your heart you still be. Get through this. We'll get through this. We'll break new ground. We'll break yeah. new ground. When we're lost within our weakness, hope is waiting to be found. We'll get through this. We'll get through this. No matter what it takes. No matter what it takes. I believe we will. I believe we will. Nothing formed against you will succeed. Nothing formed against you will succeed. All that's in your heart, you still believe. We'll get through this. We'll break through this.